Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. State police looking for answers after a woman is found on the South Build Freeway with a head injury. Thanks for joining us. I'm Will Jones. I'm Pamela Osborne. Troopers discovered the woman around 6 o'clock this morning. Sean Lay joins us live with an update on that investigation, Sean. Pamela, Will, follow me this way. I want to show you exactly where this woman was found badly injured here. Here's the Southfield Freeway Service Drive on the other side of the fence. Those are the northbound lanes. That's where a number of drivers early this morning spotted the woman in those northbound lanes. Again, badly injured, but this is important. When MSP got here, they did not find any signs of an auto accident. This is the intersection of a side street called Elmira and the Southfield Freeway Service Drive. There are two vacant lots here, and you can see traffic on the Southfield Freeway speeds right by. Neighbors nearby tell us they did not see what happened here early this morning. This is what the exact area looked like just after 6.30 this morning. Multiple drivers on the Southfield Freeway calling 911. They could clearly see the body of a woman lying on the right shoulder of the northbound Southfield Freeway near the Schoolcraft entrance ramp. Michigan State Police troopers arrived along with Detroit EMS. The freeway was shut down for an investigation. They found that the woman was alive, clinging to life, suffering from what's described by MSP as an open head injury. However, there was no sign here of any auto accident. Did the woman walk out onto the freeway and was possibly hit, or perhaps was she pushed out of a speeding vehicle. The latest from MSP right now is, quote, we have not determined why she was on the freeway yet. We will be reviewing cameras and other technology in the area. Anyone who witnessed this incident is asked to call state police. State police still asking for people to call in with information, but there's more information we can pass along to you that MSP investigators have identified the woman as a 43 year old woman from Oak Park and tonight she remains in critical condition. We're live on the west side tonight. Sean Lake, local four back to you. Hopefully knows something and can contact someone knows something and can contact police. Thank you, Sean. Our other big story is the weather. The forewarned weather team tracking even more wet weather headed our way. Let's get over to Ron Hill. You're tracking rain and the chance of storms for your Saturday night, Ron. We're tired of rain. Pelm, Will, we are all a little bit tired of all this rain. It's really cool out there. We know the Tigers were impacted by it, of course, over the past couple of days. Now, looking outside right now, things don't look so bad, but more rain is on the way. The current temperature out there across our area. Let's go ahead and show you that temperatures are right around the lower 60s. It does feel a little bit milder, but this mild air that we're seeing right now, those temperatures going back down at 63 in Detroit, 64 Hall, 61 Pontiac, and 64 in Adrian. So what's happening? with our exact track 40 radar it is looking pretty active just to our west you can see those showers align right now particularly as you get over toward Lansing we can see that some of those are bringing down some heavier rainfall at this time let's zoom on out so we can get a bigger picture of this right in the middle of the state mid Michigan seeing that rain that's going to come through but we are still going to be seeing rainfall through the nighttime hours and it's going to be wet for the next couple of days stick around for your full forecast to see just how long so over the next few hours, we're going to see that rain chance going up as that line comes through. We'll have some rain showers early tomorrow and then some rain showers returning in the afternoon hours. They'll be scattered out there. And then even as we get into our Monday, we have some rain showers and the chance of a different type of precipitation. That's all coming up. But first, you want to be able to track these showers and the chance of thunderstorms as well. And you can do that right now by downloading the Forewarn weather app. You can get the forecast anywhere you want it. Wherever you are, you can get the hour by hour details and it's free on Apple and Android. All you have to do is search WDIV. Pam? New at six, the Detroit family's dog is recovering after being shot late last night by Wayne State University police. A university spokesperson says it's not something they take lightly, but the dog was charging at the officer. Our Megan Woods is in Midtown tonight with that story. This is the area that dog was shot. He's a golden doodle, 10 years old, named Ace, and he's not just a family pet. He's their emotional support dog, and that's what makes this even more traumatizing for this family. Got him as a puppy, um, just very gentle, very healing, 
and he he's instinctive. It's why Robin Gamble says Ace became an emotional support dog in 2017. This place that I live in now, they weren't we couldn't have a dog unless we had the proper paperwork. Robin and her 18 year old son Justin Fuller says Ace isn't aggressive and don't understand why a Wayne State police officer would shoot him. Justin says around 930 Friday night when he took Ace out for a quick bathroom break in the rain, four Wayne State police patrol cars were outside of his neighbor's front door. We walk over to this abandoned house behind us and by the time he gets about halfway there, he notices the cops and he trots over there curiously to go see, see what they're up to or whatever. He's being a dog and the, the officer looked at me, looked back at the dog and shot the dog. He didn't give me any warning, didn't say come get your dog. He was shot um, in his mouth and it went through his jaw. The, the bullet came out, uh, so he has some stitches up here and some tissue damage. A Wayne State University spokesperson confirms the shooting and says officers were initially responding to a domestic disturbance call that turned into a welfare check. They also say the dog was not on a leash, charged at the officer, and with the limited space in front of the door, the officer had nowhere to go and felt they were in danger. Robin admits Ace wasn't on a leash, but argues that doesn't justify shooting him. And there's dogs that can be off of a leash and I mean, we're steps from the door. She plans to file a complaint with police. In Detroit, Megan Woods, Local 4. Wayne State University says it plans to conduct a review of the incident and that's standard policy when an officer fires a shot. In a local four news update, three people are charged in connection to a freeway shooting that happened earlier this week on I-75. Jason Norton Jr., Tommy Moore, and Marquis Stewart face assault and weapons charges. The shooting happened Tuesday evening in the northbound lanes at Schaefer. Police tried to pull over the suspect's car later that day on Detroit's west side, but the car didn't stop. Troopers used a pit maneuver to end that chase. Two weapons were found in the car. A total of five people were taken into custody. A manhunt is un underway in Texas for the suspect who opened fire, killing five members of one family, including an eight-year-old child. It happened last night at a home in Cleveland, Texas, about 55 miles north of Houston. Investigators say the shooting stemmed from a noise complaint. Officers found several survivors, some young children covered in blood in the home, but they were not hurt. Police say the gunman was a next-door neighbor. He was shooting a rifle in his yard when he was asked to stop. The victims, uh, they came over to the fence, said, hey, could, do you mind not shooting uh, out in, in the yard? We have a young baby that, that's uh, trying to go to sleep, and uh, he had been drinking, and he says, I'll do what I want to in my front yard. Police say they know the whereabouts of the suspect who had a habit of firing his weapon outside of his home. Sheriff's deputies say a Michigan couple died after crashing their plane in Georgia. 76-year-old Robert and 75-year-old Sandra Denton were flying from Florida to Georgia, Georgia in their single-engine plane when it crashed near Athens in the town of Watkinsville. The family says they were both seasoned pilots and they find comfort in knowing that they were together and doing what they loved. The couple were residents of Williamsburg and Claire, Michigan. They also had a home near Orlando, Florida. A memorial in Detroit dedicated to honoring COVID-19 victims is getting a new home. The Detroit Healing Memorial is an installation in downtown Detroit's hunting place. It was created to honor Southeast Michigan residents lost during the pandemic. And now it's moving to the Cranbrook Art Museum. The installation was created by artist Sonia Clark and features memorial. The memorial rather features pouches for people to honor their loved ones. There's still time to visit the memorial at its Detroit location. It will be there until tomorrow at 5 p.m. It's the final day of the NFL draft and the Lions make a big trade. Jamie will have more later in sports, but first our Paul Tubman is going for it in Troy. Had you heard Channel 4 was having a singing contest? People have been going for it at Somerset Collection. I'll have a report.